Texans at Ravens, two electrifying MVP candidates going head to head. Well, I'm going to ask you about Deshaun Watson. You have no idea how focused this young person is. I didn't even see the play until after the game. Watson trying to get away. He does to the right, throws to the end zone, caught by Fells. Magical. Well, Watson gets it done mostly through the air. Lamar Jackson offers a dual threat combination as lethal as any quarterback that's ever played in the league. I am enamored with Lamar Jackson. 35, spins at the 30. Lamar Jackson, 10, 5, touchdown, Ravens! Thank you for giving us hope. He does stuff that doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. He is Michael Vick 2.0. Sean's a warrior. Even if, you know, he couldn't see out that eye, he was going to come out there. I mean, that's that's who he is. He's a winner. Deshaun Watson coming yeah. to his own, making a case for why he should be in the conversation for MVP. No greater challenge than Deshaun Watson. I'm excited. I was excited about it from, from the get-go. Oh, what a matchup that is going to be, and we have it on CBS 1 Eastern on Sunday. Two of the top five in the MVP race right now, Deshaun Watson against Lamar Jackson. Two really good teams as well. Two really good teams, and I think that may be actually what this game comes down to, is how the teams out around each of these quarterbacks plays and how they help them out. And I think it all starts on the offensive line. You know, earlier this season when we watched the Houston Texans, they were really struggling. Granted, young in some areas, they go ahead and they get the additional tonsil. It didn't help right away, but now they've developed into a group that is playing some of their best football. On the flip side, Baltimore, their offensive line has been pretty solid this year. Now, granted, some of that has to do with the fact of the scheme and what they get from Lamar Jackson. But to me, it's going to come down to which one of those offensive lines plays the best to give them a chance, whether it is in the running game or passing game for Lamar Jackson or just in the protection for Deshaun Watson. Even as good as he is, you know, creating plays and then be scrambling and getting kicked in the face and still throwing a touchdown pass, there's still going to be times where he's going to need that protection from the big boys up front. It's funny how different they are as quarterbacks. Watson moves to throw, Jackson moves to run, and yeah. he's a great runner, and he's dynamic the way he runs. You, you know, you mentioned the Texans offensive line. Uh, Carlos Hyde was here last week. We talked about he was raving about Howard, the rookie, and, and being back in the lineup and what he means from a physical standpoint for them. Sharping is playing better now at guard. I think they're kind of settled in a little bit on that line. And like you mentioned, Brady, that's been a big problem for them, and he's held the ball. And I'll give Carl Smith a lot of credit. And you know Carl Smith. Carl, Smith, tater. Carl Smith has helped him in a big way get rid of the football. And he did it for Russell Wilson, and he's doing it for Deshaun Watson. And I, and I think the common denominator between Russell and Deshaun Watson is something you touched on is they both move to throw. Uh, one, they're both winners. They're extremely focused on what they need to do to win. And I think just from my time being with Tater Smith, both in Cleveland, both in Seattle was, you know, he helps you simplify the game. You know, he really takes a lot of the nuances that are in, you know, a play call and scheme and everything else you're doing as a quarterback, but he helps to simplify it down to just making you play again. And that was one of the things that I loved about him is just when those guys and the play breaks down, they're just playing the game of football. They're making a play, and I think that's where they're most special. That's one of the reasons why I think Tater Smith or Carl Smith, as we used to Tater. call him. We he's call him Tater. Tater. I, I think it's one of the reasons why he's gotten the most out of both Deshaun and Russell. He's been doing it since the Bobby Bear days in New <laughs> Orleans, and he's a heck of a football coach. The, the other thing to just quickly to keep an eye on, Don Martindale is going to bring a lot of pressure. Yes. Right? So he's going to test Deshaun Watson, his ability to know where to go, what the answers are. And the flip side, you know, Romeo Cornell typically likes to play a lot of man coverage. Can't do that versus the Baltimore Ravens and Lamar Jackson. So what adjustments do they make from a coverage standpoint? Do they keep a spy, two spies? That's going to be the fascinating part is how each of these defenses handles the quarterback. Let's do a little throwback Thursday, shall we? Because these two quarterbacks faced off three years ago in college. Louisville taking on Clemson. It was early October 2016. Lamar Jackson would eventually win the Heisman Trophy. Deshaun Watson would eventually lead Clemson to a national championship. And I don't know if you guys remember this game, but it was great. Clemson was down late. Deshaun Watson led the Tigers to two fourth quarter touchdown passes. He threw five in the game. Jackson ran for a buck 62. Clemson won the game 42 to 36. And we take that this week. Oh, I think oh. you're going to get, you're not going to get 42 36, but you're going to get a lot close. of points. You're going to get close. a lot of points in this game. And Deshaun Watson and Lamar Jackson. Ravens a four-point favorite at home. Uh, who do you like in this game? I like the over in this game. This could be a shootout, right? You've got uh, look. This is gonna, this is the game of the week, and I think people are probably tweeting like at CBS Sports. Why would you flow? Why would you let us flex the game? 
Flex the game, but you can't flex it. It's a one o'clock game. It's only <laughs> the afternoon games are allowed. Plus, it's ours. We're keeping it because it's Lamar versus Sean. It's going to be freaking great. I can't. No, seriously, I can't wait to watch this game. It's going to be an incredible matchup between two of the top five, maybe top three Heisman contenders. I'm not sure how Houston's going to slow down Lamar. Um, the only concerns I really have is that when you look at these two teams, um, they are top top five, top three in terms of uh, time of possession per drive in terms of plays per drive, in terms of points per drive. They score, they score in bunches, they can score quickly. Will Fuller back for Deshaun Watson, that lends another deep threat. The Ravens secondary's been playing pretty well, and Houston's been very good against a run, so there are some matchup issues here. I just think that these two quarterbacks are too dynamic to be slowed down very often. If they do bog down in the red zone at all, and they don't get any shot plays, then maybe this stays under. But I think this game is already down to 49 and a half. I, I'm, I'm going the other way. I don't care. Let it sink. Take the over. This game's being played in the 50s. Love both teams to put up a bunch of points in this one. All right, going over the 49 and a half. And, and Will, I'm just curious. So if you could have one of these quarterbacks for the next five years, who would you pick and why? That's not nice. It's a great <laughs> question. Um, you know, I uh, I don't I, I think that I would I think that Lamar Jackson is the most exciting player in football right now. But I think I would probably go with Deshaun Watson. You, you think about how well he's done with what's around him, and he's had DeAndre Hopkins and Fuller, as I mentioned, some nice weapons in the passing game. And but I mean, like up until this year, you know, they didn't have any offensive line. I just think you could plug Watson in, in you, you put him in the right system with the right pieces around him, he could really do well. Lamar Jackson, a very special talent, but I think if he didn't have the ecosystem that the Ravens have with Greg Roman, um, the analytical approach that they, they took to building out this rushing attack, um, the, the play calling that they've had there, the, the symbiosis, symbiosis with, with John Harbaugh. I think that we might be looking at maybe a more difficult path to him being great than we've seen so far. The Ravens have done a tremendous job building him out. Uh, I would probably lean Watson, but not by much. Houston to Baltimore. I told you about Carlos Hyde. That's your stat of the game. He has 10 to 12 carries in their three losses. I, I've got a good stat of the game. Oh, oh, okay, because I guess I had a bad one. Go ahead. DeAndre Hopkins has averaged 15.2 fantasy points per game with Will Fuller, 22.3 without Will Fuller, the same number of catches per game as he had targets per game. When Is that with this season or, or This career? season. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, I don't think anybody's sitting DeAndre Hopkins, you but can't. it is a good point. Right. Well, I think it, may right. ch it changes his appeal in FanDuel. Right. Like, that's for sure. Yeah. Okay, so so Watson. Anybody you're starting, it's not an easy matchup. Baltimore's defense got a lot better. Anybody you're starting over Watson that you ordinarily wouldn't. I know he's still a top five, but. No. Like, any Jack is the only name. Well, Lamar, you may have drafted Watson and Lamar Jackson and been yeah, struggling sure. with that decision on a weekly basis. And I'll start okay. Mahomes over him, too, but yep. that's in the exact same no one had Patrick and Deshaun. Okay. So most you're going to start Deshaun Watson, who's had mostly tough matchup all, all year, and he's been It's a tough. weird over-under. What is it? 50. 50, yeah. Okay, why is that weird? Because I don't think the Texans can score very well against this defense. So it's where is it going to come from? Is it going to be 30-20 to 20 game? You know, 31-20? So maybe it's one of those sucker lines. It just they feels weird. It, like, uh, like you're, you they're, know, they're you're trying to entice you to take The Texas over. defense is clearly not good. And so no. Baltimore should have well, success scoring. They They're a good got defense. Two, they got two members of their secondary back going into that game in London. We thought Gardner Minshew was going to be great. They got Joseph and uh, their safety, Gibson, back. They, they had played a, a lot better. Game plan. They had a great game plan against but the Jaguars, which is better. why the sack total to me is a little skewed because Minshew just got jumpy in the pocket the last two games for him, and that's why I think he's being benched. And they so, don't have they, a great And they defense. can't do that in this they game. They don't. But they, they may not be as bad as we thought because their secondary was really beat up. Now, that doesn't mean anything in this game because Lamar Jackson is obviously a must start. I think he's your number one or number two quarterback. Uh, the running backs, though, uh, we're sitting Hyde, right? You want to get away from him? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Duke Johnson, get away from him? PPR flex. Yep. Okay. And let's talk about Mark Ingram. He's actually pretty interesting. He was going to be in the rankings disputes, but we'll do it right now. Because, Dave, you've got him, like, uh, outside your top 15, and, and Heath and Jamie – Inside your top 10, I believe, uh, for Mark Ingram. And that's interesting to me because this is a really good run defense. They've allowed 3.6 yards per carry since week one. And uh, Mark Ingram, you know, doesn't get a ton of work, doesn't catch up a ton of passes. So mm -hmm. a lot of faith in him. 14th in PPR, but top 10 in non-PPR. So uh, 
Jamie Heath, you guys can kick it off with Ingram. I think he scores. And, you know, we've seen when they're in competitive games, he gets more work. You know, you go back to the Patriots game two weeks ago. And so I, I think – I don't think the Texans are going to roll over here. So while I don't know if they're going to score – to the level of what the numbers suggest, I still think they're going to be in this game and make it a, a, a tough on Baltimore. And so I think Ingram's got a chance here for 15 carries, and, and we've seen what his numbers are when he gets that type of workload. So I'll, I'll take my chances with him to get 80 in a touchdown. Yeah, I think in, in non-PPR, he's probably been a top 10 running back more often than not, and I don't know that this matchup's difficult enough to where I would consider sitting him. Dave? He's only had one game with 15 carries in his last four, and – he could have had it against Cincinnati. They didn't need him to do it in that game. I don't know how much they're going to need him to do it in this game. And Lamar Jackson's been do too they, good as a runner. Blow out the Texans? I, I, I don't know if it's going to be a blowout, but I think that they're going to win pretty handily. Okay. Uh, we already talked about Marquise Brown. We're starting DeAndre Hopkins. If Will Fuller plays, would you start Will Fuller? If Will Fuller doesn't play, would you start Kenny Stills? By the way, Kenny Stills is 50% owned. If Will Fuller is back, I think that's someone you can probably drop if you want to yep. pick up maybe a handcuff you can drop him or something like that. Fuller is ba isn't back. All right. Yeah, Baltimore, they've allowed 100 yards or a touchdown to a wide receiver in all but one game. It's probably going to be Hopkins. <laughs> but what do you think about Fuller? He's a, you know, boomer bust number three receiver. Yep. Yep. Okay, Fuller or, let's say, Tyler Boyd, Tyrell Williams. Behind those guys. Behind those guys by pro about 10 spots, probably. All right. For well, me, just, Fuller would be in the Devontae Parker, Cole Beasley range. It, he's in the range of I need to start a player that's got some high upside and might be able to hold on to one deep pass. The Mike Williams range. Yep. Well, except Mike Williams hasn't really done it this year. He has zero touchdowns. Fuller has one game with touchdowns, maybe two. Yeah. And, yeah. and one game with three drops. Yeah. Three drop touch. I mean, you know, the, the high risk, high reward. Do you need somebody like that in your lineup? Are you playing against the number one team in your league? And if that's the case, that then you go with Fuller. That does not matter to me. I just. It I might matter to me with guys on by. It matters you know, to a lot of others. I feel good about a lot of other people, and I know I'm going up against a stacked team. I need points. Yeah. People care about that. I, I don't because I think you can outsmart yourself and you can I, I never look points at my on opponents. your bench. No, I, yeah, I almost I never, never do either because I play in too many leagues. But if, if I know that my lineup is missing Tyler Lockett and I want somebody that's kind of like Tyler Lockett, Will Fuller is someone I would consider. Okay. Darren Fells is 60% owned. He uh, has inconsistent targets, but he has six or more fantasy points in non-PPR in five of his last seven games. That's pretty good. 12 or more in PPR in four of his last seven games. The Ravens have not really been tested. I don't know that they're good against tight ends, but they do allow the seven fewest points against tight ends. Uh, starters hit fells. Well, the Ravens have only allowed two touchdowns to tight ends all year. One did come last week to Eifert, and I feel like he's just a he's, – he's become like a touchdown or bust tight end for Houston and a red zone option. He's a guy that's taking touchdowns away from Carlos Hyde. So if you think he can score, if you can't find a better uh, tight end that's more dependable for yardage, then you go with Fells. I think if Fuller plays, you stay away from him. I just think you you can find. Like, there's there's a lot of streaming tight ends this week, and none of them are safe, but you can find a guy that's a better yardage. Do you stick with Kasicki, or do you go back to Fells versus Kasicki? I'd go Fells no over Kasicki, but I'd go Nick Boyle over Fells. I'd go Nick Boyle over Fells as well. Okay, that's interesting. I mean, Nick Boyle's had some really bad games. So is he's kind of coming, coming on. So I have all these yeah, guys. but Fells, Fells like is the, uh, oh, imagine. Let's just imagine, and this is hard to do, but imagine he did not score a one-yard touchdown last week. Last game, he didn't. Last, last game. week, last game, two weeks, ago. last game. Like you look at his yardage total over his last six games, it's 12, 20, 69, 27, 58, one. But he, but Darren Fells has the most touchdown catches among tight ends. Maybe Austin Hooper has more. Yeah, it's but just I a matter of it's just a matter of what you think, and and this is a lot of it format too. You know, non PPR he's helping you. PPR he's killing you when he doesn't score. Yeah, yeah. for the most part, he'll kill you. Anyway. All right, he, he scored a touchdown last score. week and scored seven point one PPR points. Yeah, no, okay, it's, guys, it's two let's weeks. move on. It's tough. Uh, Baltimore DST. Dave and Jamie have him fourteenth. Heath has him sixth. So. Uh, you know they're in play. Is that just because you you want to say even it's if it's a tough matchup you just go with them anyway, Heath? I think they could give up points to Houston and still score fantasy points. Deshaun Watson's thrown some interceptions. They have had trouble protecting him in the past. I think they'll get a few sacks. 
they can make some plays and then they may give up some points as well. It really and it's so like ranking defenses is the worst <laughs> because there's I get it. Uh, like, we've wow. got four different scoring formats in the leagues I play in just on CBS. And with, I see Dave has Dave has moved the Ravens defense up. So now it's Jamie who's the outlier who has them outside the top twelve. 